Dino Nechef writes, Hello, Collider crew. I love the positive direction you're going in, even after John moving on. My question is about how trailers are made. Do the people see all the footage shot and use that, or do they see the whole movie and cut it up based on what they think will be played better in a minute 30 to 30? Thanks. Well, that is a great reason to apply for a job at Trailer Park or any of the other <laughs> facilities that cut trailers. This is whether you get to see the entire movie months and months ahead of time. Unfortunately, I don't think that's the case. But my take on it is that it's every trailer is going to be different. So if you have these huge blockbusters that have a shroud of secrecy over them, whether it's Force Awakens or it's Batman versus Superman or Civil War, you're going to get some footage. You're going to get the footage that the studio wants to use to sell their brand at that particular time, whether it's going to be a teaser, trailer one, trailer two, and then it's the job of whoever is editing and cutting the trailer to put that footage in and then get approval by the studio. With a smaller movie, maybe you do get to see the whole movie ahead of time and maybe you are you get to collaborate a little bit more with the studio as far as what you want in there and what would be the best way to sell your movie because I look at trailers as two and a half minute pieces of art. I love watching trailers trailers sometimes they're way better than the movie the village remember that great trailer <laughs> it's not talking about the movie so i think it's an important role that they play in selling the movie and in being something special to watch on their own and it is a worthy endeavor to get into dennis trailers yeah, How do they get made? yeah it's, it's like you said it's, it's a post-production facility that's, that's geared and specialized just to make trailers it's not mm -hmm. the people who are editing the movie that make these trailers and they don't get to watch the whole movie it's like some PR company marketing firm they watch a rough cut they deal with the director in the studios and then they choose out the sound bites and then the visuals that they want to show they give them like a big handful of them and then they piece it together from there but it's yeah it's, it's an art in into itself Josh? Yeah, I, I worked uh, briefly. A buddy of mine still works at a, a company that makes trailers, and it's uh, it's an unbelievable kind of process. Is a lot of people ask when they see the credits, like, what does a second assistant director do? Uh, a second second assistant director has a lot of jobs, but he also takes notes on things that he would think would be good in the trailer. Then you have marketing executives that get clips based from the director and the producer, only things that they would want people to see in the trailer. Then you have the studio heads that go, and then they send that footage to a trailer house raw. And uncut basically just like the dialogue the sound isn't there and then these people take it's you know they take it put it on a canvas and then just paint a perfect picture with it it's an it's it really is there's so much more that goes into trailers than we actually know Schnapp, you're a director you make a piece of content you really care about what you just crafted would you trust somebody in a post-production facility like a trailer park or something else to handle your baby with care on a large budget production, yes. On a small pr budget production, no. Like for the for the trailers, me and uh, the other editor, Marie, cut our trailers for our film because we knew what we wanted to tell. We we knew what we wanted to reveal, and it's in that way you're sculpting the what the the little mini version of the movie is to entice people to see the full version. Uh, I think a lot of uh, bigger companies now, outside of Star Wars, I think Star Wars like you, you that's a really good example of how. None of that footage was sent anywhere, and that was like all in-house. That entire, all of those trailers were were made very decisively, and they just revealed just a little bit more of the same first scenes that they revealed in that very first, like you know, Chewy were home trailer. Like you always, you just always saw just a little bit more of the Millennium Falcon on Tatooine, or just a little bit more of inside the Millennium Falcon. Just so that kind of thing. They're doing the same thing with Batman v Superman, and when they did do that big reveal, is she with you? I thought she was with you. You know, heads were rolled because the reaction to that trailer was so negative. They were like, mm, you're not doing this anymore. How about you do this? And a whole new team was put on, at least right. as far as what I know, to put all these newer, the newer Batman v Superman trailers, which put the movie back on track as far as what the audience wanted, which was seemed, it seems kind of easy to say, why are you showing all this stuff? Keep it to Batman v Superman. But a lot of studios freak out when they have such a, like a hundred or 200, even $300 million film where they're like, show them everything, show them the end. Like I remember, <laughs> no, I swear to God, Men in Black was the first trailer that I remember seeing where they showed right. the ending. They showed that UFO landing with the two Men in Black holding their guns. Yeah. And I was like, in the theater, I was like, they just showed the ending. Yeah. I knew it was the ending, I felt it, because it was like, that's such a big budget spectacle. Mm. It would have been great if they flipped it and that's how the movie began. Then yeah. I would have been like, wow, that's some balls. But no, a lot of times they just try to give you a mini version of the movie. But why do they do that? Because it shows that they can tell that works. If you yeah. show everyone a, like, oh, we're gonna get every all that, I'll go see it. 
people like us, we don't want to see, see all those spoilers, but unfortunately for a larger mass audience, they'd rather see a lot of little scenes. Yeah. That's right. I mean, look, we're huge fans of trailers here. We actually do a lot of reaction slash reviews on the Collider Video YouTube channel. You guys out there in cyberspace, comment and let us know, what are your favorite trailers of all time? What's the trailer that really got you into the mood of whatever movie you're going to see? Do you guys have any at the top of your head, like an all-time great trailer? Well, like 90s and then into the 2000s, you were still getting the inner world guy, Yeah. yeah. right? Uh, if you guys go back and watch the Cobra trailer, the Stallone movie, oh, it's an amazing trailer. Watch the Predator trailer, too, Predator. because it's just Schwarzenegger, and he's yeah. going up against an alien this time. Yeah. See you in this theater. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I think my all-time favorite trailer ever is just because it was like hit me right at the right age was Empire Strikes Back. Like I was already like foaming at the mouth because I had uh -huh. seen Star Wars, and then the that I, who would have ever thought you'd see the return of Darth Vader and like right. him jumping with a lightsaber to fight Luke and the Millennium Falcon flying around the asteroid with that music, freaked me out. That's why I saw it so many times in the theater because it just like instantly was like I can't wait to see that. Like mm -hmm. for a year, like I think the trailer came out a year early, so you're right. just you're just going to see movies just to see the trailer. On yeah. the flip side of that, Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring, an awful trailer, but the movie was kick ass. Mm. So, I, I don't know. Dennis, yeah. what do you got for a contender as far as greatest trailer you've ever seen? Oh, I don't know. I mean, there's so many good ones. I know the last great one I saw was that Mad Max one. Mm. Uh, I think it was the second one. I, I can't remember. Yes, the second one where it was, it was just, just like the, the classical big. music yeah. and all the, the, like, it was like a controlled chaos, all the shots, and it was like, it told you exact. So when I saw the movie, I was like, this is exactly what I was expecting because yes. that trailer didn't reveal too much. But at the same time, it gave me the tone and feel of how it was going to be, and I loved every minute. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of good ones in the chat room right now. You got Inception, a lot of people are saying. Uh, the Social Network, which was, which I thought was a great trailer, but I just didn't like the, the choir singing Radiohead. Right. I thought that was kind of odd to me. My favorite trailer to this day, I still think, is Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. <laughs> that first teaser that came out was just so good and captivating, and I could not believe Star Wars was back. And then you see the double-sided lightsaber. It was a pretty sweet trailer. It's too bad it was full of lies. <laughs> you know, been, I, you know I, what I, was a, most recently was a trailer that everybody talked about how it kind of ruined the movie was Southpaw. We saw the, we right. saw like the main plot yes. points of Southpaw. I was like, I don't need to see this That's movie. That's exactly why I didn't see the movie. Because yeah. when we saw the trailer, I was like, yeah. oh, I just saw yeah. the entire movie. Sounds McAdams dies, yeah. he comes back. Sometimes, sometimes you Spoiler think alert. that it's going to be telling you the whole movie. Like The Martian, I thought, told me the whole yeah. movie. Yeah. But it ended up, I still think that trailer gave away way too much. But yeah. it ended up still being a worthwhile theater experience. Hey, guys, if you like this clip, click here to watch the entire episode. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because it'll help you stay up to date with all the stuff we've got going on here at Collider.